Hi kids, Mr. Galvan again. We're gonna be continuing reading The Whipping Boy. Today we're reading chapter five. Hold your nose, Billy, and cut water. Here we go. Billy pulled Prince Brat from the saddle and threw him into Jimmy. Raising the lantern, the man held it close enough that Jimmy could feel the heat of the flame. Billy was a big man, he saw, big and raw as a skinned ox and he smelled like a ton of garlic. Not much of a catch, two sparrows, said Billy, but ain't they trimmed up in fancy rags, cut water? Ain't they, echoed the rattable man. Got any gold in your pockets, lads? That's no business of yours, snapped the prince. Ah, <laughs> but so help me, it is my business, Billy said with a thunderclap of laughter. Don't you know who I am? A clod and a ruffian, declared the prince. <laughs> Worse than that, corrected the big man. Ain't you never heard of hold your nose, Billy? Famous he is, put in Cutwater. Put to song, Billy is, is Billy. Jimmy thought he remembered. Hadn't he heard ballad sellers fling that name about the streets? The exploits of hold your nose, something or other in verses by the yard? The highwayman, are you? The same. The murderer? Oh, only in the line of duty, Hold Your Nose Billy chuckled. So you won't mind if we take your horse and empty your pockets. Not a copper between us, said Jimmy. Well, you see, a prince didn't carry money, for he had no use for it. And Jimmy's accounts, well, they were kept on the books. What's in the basket, piped up Cutwater. Hands off, villain, snapped Prince Brad. Ah, don't you know who I am? Jimmy gave the prince a sudden jab of his elbow to keep his mouth shut. Not a word. But the heir to the throne raised himself to his full height. Bow to your prince. Fog swirled around the lantern. Bow to what? asked Cutwater. I am Prince Horace. And I'm the grand turnip of China, Cutwater snickered. Dim-witted villain, shouted the prince. I command you to turn us loose, or Papa will hang you, the pair of you in chains. Hold your trap, Billy. Uh, Jimmy thought. Don't you have a thimble full of brains? A prince will make a fine catch for these rogues. Um, me friend's muddle-headed, he declared. His paw's nothing but a rat catcher, but... Don't he put on airs, though? Got enough lip for two sets of teeth, chortled the big highwayman. Cutwater, take the lantern and fetch the horse. What do you reckon's in the basket, Billy? Oh, plenty of time to find out. The lantern floated off. The evil-smelling Billy clutched each boy hard by the ear. Stir your legs, walk, and don't let me catch you on our turf again. Do I make myself clear? Uh, clear as window glass, said Jimmy with a sigh of relief. If you'd be kind enough to point us to the river, I'd be ever so much obliged. Billy, came a shout from Cutwater. They ain't just common sparrows. Have a look at this saddle. Hold your nose, Billy, hung onto the boy's ears. At the horse's side, Cutwater was holding the lantern close to the saddle. <gasps> Skin me alive, declared the big man. That's the king's own crest. Oh, we stole it, horse and saddle, Jimmy put in desperately. Bosh, retorted Prince Brat scornfully. Didn't I tell you who I was? Bow low, you fools, and be off. But the two men neither bowed nor fled. Hold your nose, Billy, threw a bushy-eyed glance at his fellow outlaw. Cutwater, what do you reckon a genuine prince on the hoof is worth? His weight in gold, at least, Billy. And that's that chapter.